Namaste Angels. This is the weekly general reading for the period of Sunday, September 16th through Saturday, September 22nd. And I'm going to begin with the Christian calendar and Friday the 21st, which is also the last day of summer. I'm beginning with this because, well, not only do I have to go over it this week anyway, but right before I started the reading, I received um, a DM from a woman on my Facebook who had asked me to pray for her husband last week. His name is Matthew. And she wrote me right before I turned on the camera to say, you know, thanks again. And actually not only to me, but to my Facebook friends, those who participated, because after I prayed for him, I actually ended up doing a post asking that others join with me and pray for him as well. And so, um, you know, she thanks us all. And she was writing to let me know that he'll be released from the hospital in six days. So uh, six equals love and justice and, you know, just all things awesome. Venus, she could be helping here. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's get into St. Matthew, who um, is celebrated on September 21st, going to www.franciscanmedia.org. Matthew was a Jew who worked for the occupying Roman forces, collecting taxes from other Jews. The Romans were not scrupulous about what the quote unquote tax farmers got for themselves. Hence, the latter known as quote unquote publicans were generally hated as traitors by their fellow Jews. The Pharisees lumped them in with quote unquote sinners. And you can find this in um, the book of Matthew 9, 11 through 13, 9, 11 through 13. Um, as far as the dates, of course, were also very special dates. 9, 11, we celebrated um, the Islamic New Year. Hijiri, we celebrated the um, Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. Um, we celebrated the new moon. No, that was, um, well, yeah, we were still in the energy that day um, of the Virgo new moon because the moon didn't enter Libra until the 12th. Yep, so we celebrated the new moon. Uh, the 13th, I celebrated, recognized the passing of Tupac Shakur. Um, some of you others may have recognized that, but to me, those are both special dates. Um, so I'm happy to see them here in the reading also. So anyway, moving on, it was shocking to them to hear Jesus call such a man to be one of his intimate followers. Like, why do you want this tax guy? Right. Matthew got Jesus in further trouble by having a sort of going away party at his house. The gospel tells us that many tax collectors and quote unquote, those known as sinners came to the dinner. The Pharisees were still more badly shocked. What business did the supposedly great teacher have associating with such immoral people? Jesus's answer was quote, those who are well do not need a physician. <laughs> those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but to call sinners. And this can be found in Matthew 9, 12 through 13. Jesus was not setting aside ritual and worship. He's saying that loving others is even more important. No other particular incident about Matthew are found in the New Testament. From such an unlikely situation, Jesus chose one of the foundations of the church, a man others judging from his job thought was not only not holy enough for the position, but just not good enough, period. But Matthew was honest enough to admit that he was one of the sinners Jesus came to call. He was open enough to recognize truth when he saw him, quote, and he got up and followed him, Matthew 9, 9. And that too was a special day last week or this week, actually, because um, today, the day on which I'm recording this reading is the 14th. Nine, nine was the day that the Virgo new moon rose. Matthew is the patron saint of accountants, which I am. Um, actors, which I am. I mean, technically, I guess I could say I am. I definitely was as a child, child model and actress. I was a SAG member. All I got to do is catch my dues up if anybody wants to hire me. <laughs> I kid. Well, you know, hey, I kid, but go ahead if you want to. Um, bankers, 
That's what my dad is, uh, was. He's retired. Bookkeepers, I've been that as an, somebody um, degreed in accounting. Bookkeeper. Tax collector. Uh, also taxi drivers, which seems kind of random. All right, moving on to the Hebrew calendar. I otherwise would have started with the Jewish calendar because um, this day that we're going to review comes prior to the 21st, and that is September 19th, um, Yom Kippur. And the days leading up to it, um, from beginning from Rosh Hashanah on the 10th, each day has been a day of repentance. Okay, the 10 days of repentance, I talked about that last week, leading up to Yom Kippur, which is the 19th. Um, but also, for the, 30, the 21st, before I forget, it just popped into my head, um, the number 12 is important. On the 21st, or the last day of summer, or the first day of the fall equinox, which I guess would be the 22nd technically, there are supposed to be like two equal, um, day is supposed to be 12 hours and night is supposed to be 12 hours on that day. So that's what's special about it. All right. So, um, Jewish calendar, Yom Kippur, I'm going to www.shabad.org, um, where they ask, what is Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur is the holiest day of the year when we're closest to God and the essence of our souls. Yom Kippur means day of atonement as the verse states, quote, for on this day, he will forgive you to purify you that you be cleansed from all your sins before God. When is it? Well, it's the 10th day of Tishrei in 2018 from several minutes before sunset on Tuesday, September 18th until after nightfall on Wednesday, September 19th, we will recognize this day. It's coming on the heels of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish new year, which is on the first and second days of Tishrei. And how is it recognized? For nearly 26 hours, we quote unquote, afflict our souls. We abstain from food and drink, we do not wash or apply lotions or creams. We do not wear leather footwear and we abstain from martial relations. Instead, we spend the day in the synagogue praying for forgiveness. Just months after the people of Israel left Egypt in the year 2448, this is the year 5,779, by the way, um, or if you want to know it in, I guess, Gregorian terms. It's the year 1313 BCE. They had sinned by worshiping a golden calf. Moses ascended Mount Sinai and prayed to God to forgive them. After 40 days and just the stint on the mountain, full divine favor was obtained. The day Moses came down the mountain, which was the 10th day of Tishrei, was to be known forevermore as the day of atonement or Yom Kippur. That year, the people built the tabernacle, a portable home for God. The tabernacle was a center for prayers and sacrificial offerings. The service in the tabernacle climaxed on Yom Kippur when the high priest would perform a specially prescribed service. Highlights of this service included offering incense in the Holy of Holies, where the ark was housed, and the lottery with two goats one of which was brought as a sacrifice and the other being sent out into the wilderness for, or Azazel. While the high priest generally wore ornate golden clothing on Yom Kippur, he would immerse in a mikvah and don plain white garments to perform his service. The practice continued for hundreds of years throughout the time of the first temple in Jerusalem, which was built by King Solomon, and the second temple, which was built by Ezra. Jews from all over would gather in the temple to experience the sacred site of the high priest performing this service, obtaining forgiveness for all of Israel. When the second temple was destroyed in the year 3830, or the 70 the year 70, if you want to look at it again from the Gregorian calendar, the Yom Kippur service continued 
Instead of a high priest bringing the sacrifices into Jerusalem, every single Jew performs the Yom Kippur service in the temple of his or her heart. Forty days before Yom Kippur, on the first day of Elul, we begin blowing the shofar. That's that big horn. Okay. And they blow it every morning before reciting Psalm 27 after the morning and afternoon prayers. In Sephardic communities, it's customary to begin saying this selakot early every morning. Ashkenazi Jews begin just a few days before Rosh Hashanah. And all of this is done toward building an atmosphere of reverence, repentance, and awe leading up to Yom Kippur. For the week before Yom Kippur, known as the 10 days of repentance, special additions are made to the prayers and people are particularly careful with their mitzvah observance. Just as Yom Kippur is a day of fasting, the day before Yom Kippur is set aside for eating and preparing for the holy day. Here are some activities that are done on the day before Yom Kippur. Kaparo is often performed in the wee hours of this morning. There is a beautiful custom to request and receive a piece of honey cake so that if God forbid it was decreed that we need to be recipients, it be fulfilled by requesting honey cake and being blessed with a sweet year. We eat two festive meals, one in early afternoon and another right before the commencement of the fast. Many have a custom to immerse in mikvah on this day. Extra charity is given. In fact, special charity trays are set up in the synagogue before the afternoon service, which contain the Yom Kippur al Shayat prayer. Just before the fast begins, after the second meal has been concluded, it's customary to bless the children with priestly blessings. Holiday candles are lit before the onset of the holy day. And you can read more about the traditions um, if you wish to on www.shabad.org. This week's major transits in the celestial system include on September 20th at 9.41 p.m. Saturn quintile Neptune, 2 degrees 43. September 21st, in addition to the equinox, at 11.39 p.m., Mercury enters Libra, air on air action. And September 22nd at 9.54 p.m., 9.9, the sun also enters Libra. So uh, beginning on the 23rd, we'll have some Libra birthdays. We'll leave those for next week's reading. Um... Which did I say came first? Saturn, Quintile, Neptune. So for Saturn, Quintile, Neptune, I actually brought up an old article that begins explaining what it means when Saturn is by Quintile, Neptune. The difference is the degree. Okay, so that it still applies. So I'm going to read from this because I thought it was pretty detailed and thorough. Um, it is a site called StarWorldNews.com. Saturn and Neptune align this week, two very negative points certain to wreak havoc on our normal sense of control and order in our lives. When two planets aspect each other, the energies seem to play off each other in our lives, causing a sort of temporary intersection of their effects. In this case, Saturn's propensity to react patholog pathologically to unresolved situations meets and multiplies Neptune's tendency to act deceitfully or dishonestly when faced with trouble. This is a very complicated astrological equation, but the end result is typically a deeply set anxiety arising about vague and unclear situations in our lives. It can be connected to human addictive behaviors, chronic states of disease, or deep depression. Of course, there's an upside to Saturn-Neptune combinations, and it leads us to act with more integrity with our dreams, aspirations, and ways to 
ultimate spiritual liberation. Things get very, very subtle at the end of the spiritual road. The challenge is to listen and discern the whisperings of the higher self, which is the God self, and to not listen to the sophisticated voices of the ego, which points to the accrual of more fame, power, and worldly rev revelance. Listening is Neptune. Discerning is Saturn. Both are highly refined faculties of the mind. The universe, as an agency of cosmic evolutionary progression, tends to deliver us from hindering energy patterns. Our selfish, grasping minds tend to see the universe as a cruel and cold place that we must continually fortify ourselves against and knock out some sort of pathetic existence that will be eventually obliterated by the forces of chaos. Every time we are sick, when we are down on our luck, and when hope runs out, reality is merely eclipsed by our own pessimistic projections onto the vast, magnificent wonder that is the universe, which actually has our success as a power mount intention. Throw off the drama during Saturn-Neptune time and be grateful that your cherished but wrong delusions are at the door to be dismissed forever. A little realism, courtesy of Saturn, now will help you to find the right path to salvation and the most sublime peace. For ast astrological accuracy, Saturn and Neptune, Neptune rather, are forming a biquintile, which is 144 degrees of angular separation. So again, this week will not be biquintile, it will just be quintile, but I wanted to go ahead and read what both meant. So 144 degrees, I think that's key, right? That's if it's biquintile, as in a pair of two. Are you following me? <laughs> 144 is a number associated with the number five because the 360 degrees of the circle divided into five exact segments forms sections of 72 degrees each or a quintile. Two of those sections together forms 144, hence a biquintile. Quintiles and biquintiles are powerful aspects that don't get much attention, except now in our computer age, they are slightly more pointed in their effects than squares, but not as overwhelmingly severe. If you cut a quintile in half, you get two sections of 36 degrees, which is 360 degrees divided by 10. So a tridecile is three sections of 36 degrees, or 108. You may know already that a pentagram, a powerful symbol which has been misused by the occult in many cases, is based on the angles of 72 and 144 degrees. The five pointed stars is a very important symbol to humanity. We have five fingers on each hand. We have five extremities, two arms, two legs, and one head. And the golden ratio spiral is based on the geometry of the pentagram. And that was what it means for Neptune to be, for Saturn to be quintile Neptune rather. And then Mercury in Libra. Again, another thing that's happening on the 21st. The sort of 21st is pretty action packed in terms of energy. Mercury and Libra, friendly, diplomatic, easygoing. This is from www.tarot.com. Mercury, the communication planet, gets nice and comfortable in the sociable air sign of Libra. The air element is very much about the mind and communication. So Libra meshes quite nicely with Mercury. Libra loves to build bridges and to find ways to overcome our differences. It knows that there is more than one side to any situation and wants to harmonize opposing points of view. Mercury's entry into this peacemaking sign signals a time when speech becomes a little bit softer to create more harmony in our relationships. We'll all be a little more apt to bring down the noise level, allowing both sides of an argument to be heard. Because of this, 
Mercury in Libra is the perfect time to heal wounds caused by arguments and misunderstandings. So if you've had a falling out with somebody, it's a good time to try to fix it. When Mercury's in Libra, the planet of speech and the sign of one-on-one -on -one relationships get together. Our communication with others comes into focus. This isn't just about love relationships that we're talking about. It's also about our family, friends, and coworkers too. If we've had any fights or if we've been holding on to a long-term grudge, this is a good time to finally put that to rest. Diplomacy takes center stage when Mercury is in Libra. Libra is represented by the scales of justice in astrology. So it makes sense that we'll be more objective during this time, attempting to approach every situation in a fair-minded and balanced way. Think of this transit as a gentle reminder from the universe on the importance of considering others' perspectives and embracing the beauty of compromise. One challenge of this transit is the tendency to be a little too nice. Don't sugarcoat things or withhold information just to avoid rocking the boat as kindness could end up being a barrier to real communication. We need to realize that there are many ways to connect with someone and agreement is only one of them. Expressing opposing beliefs with respect and openness is a terrific way to strengthen any partnership. And it goes on to talk about what it means if um, Mercury is in your, your Mercury is in Libra in your chart or what happens when Mercury is retrograde in Libra. So anybody wanting to read further about that, just check it out on www.tarot.com. I'm going to my dice. And I'm beginning with try again. Party. And massage. And I'm thinking right now, I hadn't thought about this before, that I will have some sort of divine light cleanse special on the 19th, the day of atonement and cleansing. If anybody's interested, a lot of you are getting readings recently. Um, and not just love. I've been doing like a lot of um, past life readings and career and finance readings and all of that and happy to see that because I, I do agree that we need clarity right now. We're being moved by so many different forces to really get on path and not just focus on, you know, love and relationship and trying to force it together, but allowing it to come together through these other means just by us living and being on our purpose. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I will take off Nineteen percent. In order of in honor of father, also at the same time, I'll do that. Nineteen percent off on the nineteenth of September for anybody that wants not just a divine line cleanse, but um, any of my energy healing to be you know to cleanse themselves in that way. All right, so I'll get back to this. Spirit says, "Dirty movie." So this can be communication. Um, and again, this Mercury and Libra is going to be about communication because you've got two air signs, both of which are about communication. Um, and, and one being the planet of communication. you got them two working together. Um, so Dirty Movie could definitely be like FaceTime and um, Skype and stuff like that. And maybe it gets a little steamy. Also, no. If there's been a yes or no question... Um, that you've been pondering related to general energies, perhaps not, not necessarily, you know, having anything to do with love and stuff. This is the general reading. Also buy shoes. And this can be for walking away or walking on down a new path, these shoes. Speaking of communication, also beginning with major arcana card number 17, the star, which represents the sign of Aquarius. Happy times make positive, optimistic, long-term plans. You are on the right path. This is not only about communication, um, but more specifically communication of an electronic means. If you ask me with Uranus and Aquarius, um, 
being the planet and sign of the rule technology. But it's also about your prayers being answered, your wishes being granted, your dreams coming true. Maybe dreams that you dreamt up and goals that you dreamt up um, a la Neptune. And maybe you'll be actually, you know, facing some of those this week with that Saturn Neptune quintile. Opening to Major Arcana card release or death in a traditional tarot. Number 13, which represents the sign of Scorpio. It's the end of a phase or situation. Spiritual transformation. It's time to move on. I definitely think that this is connected to the fact that Mars, a ruler of Scorpio, is currently in Aquarius because I shuffled these cards opposite one another quite a few times as I was preparing the cards for this reading. Um, so I think that this is, they're coming together. They want to be seen together. Mars and Aquarius. And maybe with death being opposite um, the star, it's about an end to, yes, difficult communications and those falling outs. We're facing them this week. Mars and Aquarius may help us with that um, Mercury and Libra. And into like being afraid to communicate too. I feel like we had been holding on to like trying to avoid the transition, trying to avoid facing some of these people that we've had difficulties with. And this week we're going to yeah, be facing a bunch of them. And opening to the moon with Archangel Haniel, important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. Didn't I say being afraid? Yeah, it, I guess there's the moon that was getting in the way or this sort of energy. And this is Neptune. So it could be connected to that Saturn Neptune quintile. Um, the moon represents the sign of Pisces in the tarot. That's why I say it's Neptune. Um, but it can be another water sign too, Cancer. Earth's moon, the real moon, rules the sign of cancer, and it can refer to Scorpio as well. In this scenario, however, I feel it's mostly about re um, releasing, yes, the fears that are holding you back from facing a communication or going after, you know, a dream that's been previously deferred. It's time to take action on it now. The star and major arcana card the hermit spend time in quiet meditation spiritual teaching self-discovery the hermit represents the sign of virgo and this can be guiding you to do some introspection with regard to the dreams goals um prayers and or communications the star the Hermit also about enlightenment um, and opposite the star, definitely coming into some sort of enlightenment, having some sort of revelations. And it's like, you know, thank my lucky stars. I, you know, got this information, feeling guided by them. Also opening to the high priestess with Archangel Haniel. Listen to your intuition. Have patience at this time and um, consider carefully what you want before acting. The high priestess represents the sign of Gemini for me in the tarot. Um, it can, in the, well, Gemini for me and in real life and in the tarot, um, it can be connected to water signs as well. <laughs> um, the high priestess is somebody like she knows stuff. She just knows. And she's the type you could be trying to get over on her, for example. And let's say you change your mind. You decide you're not going to. But she already knew your plot. She won't bring it up. She won't bring it up unless she feels there's something that has to be brought up. Um, but more than likely, she will not bring it up. She will act like that never happened, like you never had these bad and negative thoughts about her. And she will go on with you and be your friend. You know, not in a fake way, just in a, you know, there's no need to mention that sort of way. But I know. And I, I know you think I don't know, but I know. <laughs> Um, that's, that's who she is. She, um, is extremely intuitive and clear cognizant and observant and just doesn't 
waste her time speaking. She's wise too. She doesn't waste her time just talking to be talking or, and you know, she doesn't act on things or say things that don't need to be said. Um, you know, she, she only uses what information and reveals what she needs to reveal. She's mysterious. Hi, priestess. One more. It is the page of earth, scholarly, dependable, patient, and successful. Good news about financial matters. Wanting to do something more challenging, maybe a new area of study. Page of earth represents the sign of Virgo. So a lot of Gemini, a lot of Virgo, both are ruled by Mercury. That could be why. And it's the three of fire, abundance. Things look very good. Have patience at this time and make long-term plans. The three of fire, or threes in general, about um, creator, cre um, creativity, the creator, um, coming up with creative ways to help to manifest our own abundance and like pursuing our passions. Like how could I do what I love as a job? Um, also indicate the need to be a little patient, you know, like you can see things manifest, you can see them taking form, but, you know, don't expect to be at the four of fire by the, you know, by tomorrow, you might not be, you may have to hold out and wait, but you know, it's coming. So keep the faith. And it's definitely about abundance. Threes are about abundance in general. Overall energy is a three of water, a celebration, a wedding, graduation, or a birth announcement. They need to have more fun. Both this three and the three that we just saw, the three of fire, can of course have something to do with some sort of party of three. Um, the three of water can be about reunions for me. And again, not just romantic, but friends making a comeback in your life. People you haven't hung out with um, in a while. You haven't been social with in a while. Maybe you haven't been social with anybody. You haven't been social, period. You're finally getting out of the house perhaps and bumping into old friends um, or being invited out or you're inviting someone out for a change and saying, let's get together. I miss you. All of those sort of things. And which fits in ex with what we read about what's going on in the sky this week or the, in this, with regard to the celestial system and the transits. Especially that Mercury in Libra. All right, Osiris, there you go. Crowning the masculine this week. It's the night of air, intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options so you can come up with creative solutions. When the night of air shows up, there's usually a decision that has to be made. The masculine may be needing to make a decision himself or awaiting one, um, waiting to hear some sort of something on, on a, a decision that's been made that's you know going to be particularly impactful upon him so that he can take some sort of action. Because as soon as he gets that news, whatever it is, he's going to, you know, that's going to, like propel him to the next step. The Knight of Air is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, um, or possibly Mercury himself, or maybe even Venus herself. Venus, ruler of both Libra and Gemini, and Mercury, ruler of Gemini, um, and like I said, Virgo as well. Surrounding the masculine is the five of fire, competing goals, bothersome details, conflict with others. This could be, again, facing the conflicts that we've been having, um, using this Mercurian energy to help us to do that. Facing some drama of some people that we weren't previously able to speak to. Five of fire also comes through for me. Um, well, in the reading that I just did about the Saturn quintile Neptune, uh, it talked about the degrees into equaling five and what five meant there. This, this five tends to mean also from like, um, the need to take action. I see Mars in it and, you know, it's sort of like a by any means necessary type of thing. Like I'm I don't care if I, if it, we fight about it, if, you know, it brings me drama, you know, whatever, bring it. I'm facing this thing. I'm taking action and like fearlessly. 
I get that from it too. Um, masculine subconscious, the king of fire, motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader, right? Leaders take action. I got this. Also, you may be taking advice from someone creative that can also be connected to this night of air, some sort of communication. Crowning the feminine. It's the nine of water. Your wish comes true. Concerns fade away. You have a love of life. This, like the star with which we started, is all about, you know, dreams coming true. Prayers having been answered. Wishes being granted. It's a big yes, um, particularly as it relates to love. But this is the general reading. And, you know, there could be a, a yes or no question. Maybe it does relate to love that is on the feminine's mind this week. The answer is Yes. Or something, if it's not love, something that will bring her joy, that will make her emotionally happy. And maybe it's connected to her dreams, her goals, something for which she has prayed. Surrounding the feminine, major arcana card, strength with Archangel Ariel. Great inner strength. Release harsh judgments. Instead, exercise some forgiveness and compassion. Um, strength, major arcana card, strength represents the sign of Leo. And I just felt like right away there may be a particular Leo or two for whom I'm reading who, you know, are wishing for something this week. And please let that communication come in from the gentleman, whether it's love or, or something else. Um, that's what she's asked for. Of course, the, you know, the feminine need not be a Leo to be feeling this, but I, I definitely felt that right just in that moment. Um, this can be referred to any of us though. And, um, Similar to what I said to the masculine, it's about facing whatever it is we're facing this week. Should be something positive, some sort of, you know, again, goals, dreams, but maybe we're nervous about them. We need not be facing them fearlessly with this energy of um, the lion, Leo. Feminine subconscious. The Knight of Earth, loyal, dedicated, honorable, and kind. It's time to buckle down and get things done. Honor your commitments. You have a guardian angel. This thing that we're facing, it may have something to do um, with our finances, with our career, or some sort of connection, relationship maybe, with an Earth sign, a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Crowning, it is the two of air, being unable or unwilling to make a decision. Remember I said the masculine's here, waiting for one or needing to make one. Is that a stalemate? Pretending there's no problem. Like if we ignore it, it'll go away. If I don't open my mail, I won't have to pay my bills, that sort of thing. <laughs> it doesn't really work. At the root, the page of fire, who's outgoing, creative, confident, and mischievous. News of an exciting new endeavor. Use your originality and ingenuity. The page of fire is a Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, and maybe a younger one or a more youthful Leo or um, Aries, if they're not a Sagittarius. Um, possibly even a Scorpio. There can also be something, a family situation, some sort of drama, maybe involving a father and a child. Maybe that's what the decision is about, custody or child support. Like it's a legal decision connected to Libra, Mercury and Libra, the sign of justice. Or maybe we're not actually in court, but the, the, again, there's some sort of disagreement. I feel involving um, a child. And it may be both a fire sign. The parent is a fire. The, the father is a fire sign. The child is a fire sign. At the heart of the matter, the three of earth, the power of creativity, recognition for very high quality work. Be a team player. The three of earth is, can be about work again. And I said, this may be somebody's, something happening in somebody's job. Could be, she has prayed for some sort of promotion, bonus, raise the feminine. 
because the three of earth is about abundance like other threes, but it's abundance that you've earned. You did the work for this abundance. Somebody's doing you a favor, somebody's giving you a gift, you know, and you shouldn't be made to feel that way. Like any accolades, praise, recognition, um, again, raise, promotion, bonus that comes with it is warranted. It is justice. It is what is your just due. So not a mistake that it's coming this week. Um, also, with again, with the Mercury and Libra. If it relates to some sort of party of three, it could be a group of people at a job. Um, or somebody may have met somebody um, to start a particular type of relationship with, a, a close friendship and or romantic relationship with somebody with whom they work. Maybe you're deciding, do I, wanna, do I want that kind of drama, you know, at my door? <laughs> do I want to start messing with somebody at my job? That can be um, the question too. And maybe they're younger, considerably younger. And for some, this is somebody trying to like um, get in the way, throw a monkey wrench in something that you've earned, that you deserve. And in that case, it's it, again, I'm feeling it's at work or it's, a, you know, a friend, a close friends and or family with whom this is happening. But I'm going to clarify these cards a little further with more tarot cards, the animal tarot, beginning with major arcana card, the dreamer or the fool. It was all about walking a brand new path. That can be what the decision is about, too. You are starting a new adventure. Run free and take a leap of faith. Well, that new path can be, again, promotion, raise. You're changing departments. You're, you know, learning a new school, new vocation at the job. You're going to be in a different area. To, you're earning a new salary, a new wage. That can be the brand new path. Opening to the 10th of summer. It's time to express your love and appreciation for family, be it relatives or a chosen family of close friends. Congratulations also may be in order on a happy, fulfilling marriage, as well as raising happy and balanced children. Dreamer. The seven of autumn. The planning, resources, and efforts that you've invested in your dream will reap great rewards. In the meantime, have patience and meditate on your next steps. The dreamer. And the five of summer. Ugh, I don't like the five of summer. Focus upon the fact that God loves you and always has the highest of intentions for you. This is about the pessimism that we just read about, too. Um, that was in the Saturn quintile neptune and this could be representing that for sure um with this being above summer that's the element of water connected to neptune pisces saturn could be what's bringing you down here a positive outlook however makes it easier to recover from life's little difficulties so that you can move onward and upward dreamer and talk about moving on when and upward yes the sixth of winter the challenging times are coming to an end and you can now breathe a sigh of relief let go of the past and embrace the happier times ahead this can be about travel perhaps over water too um or it can be metaphoric just moving into calmer stiller waters as they say dreamer i'm gonna go ahead and cut Oh, goodness. What is this? It doesn't want to be picked up. <laughs> it does not want to be picked up. Oh, I didn't want to see it either. The five of winter. Your current path isn't leading you toward the happiest possible outcome. So why not change it? Always maintain integrity and compassion, but be alert to the hidden agendas of others. Like I said, somebody here is trying to throw a monkey wrench in something. And this can be, again, conflict at work or over, over something, something that you've earned the recognition for. Um, and somebody else trying to stifle you or get in the way somehow. 
And, for, and some of you, this is what the walking shoes are needed for. You're guided to say, you know what, fuck this. Whatever the situation is, and to walk. And maybe you've been pondering that. Like, should I leave? Should I quit my job? Or should I get out of this group of three? Um, maybe it's a, a relationship, some sort of love triangle. Um, do I need to be the one to bounce? And the answer is yes. And you, it will make you more emotionally happy, even if it requires your strength in the moment to, to do it because, you know, you feel some sort of tie and whatever to this. The best choice is to get the hell away from whatever this is, whether it's a job that is toxic, a relationship that is toxic, a friendship that is toxic. Well, that's a relationship, too. Um, whatever. Get away. And the overall energy is the seven of summer which while not a court card represents the planet Neptune in the sign of Pisces, which it rules for me because it is it all these options and all this. It's like fantasizing and dreaming. And what do I do? And who do I do? <laughs> um, why do I have to do any of this? Why do I have to pick? I don't want to be bothered. I'd just rather daydream. That's what it says to me. It's time to stop procrastinating and to make a decision so that you can move forward with a priority. If you need to do more research, then do so, but don't overthink the situation. Just listen to your heart, okay? And I think your heart, again, is telling you to get away from this situation um, where it relates to something like that. That's what your heart is telling you to do. That's what the cards are telling me that they're telling you to do. And you just need to let go of the fear that's, you know, keeping you with the familiar and the comfortable, um, even though it's toxic. Knight of Cups, the Prince of Winter. So it's like the third week in a row that we've been seeing this um, air on water action. Romantic, flirtatious, introspective and enchanting. A deeply emotional and probably romantic experience will sweep you off your feet. Things can move very quickly during such a whirlwind encounter. So stay balanced and make decisions with both your heart and your intellect. Well, that's definitely possible if these are both your energy. They can also be um, an air sign having some sort of situation, um, a pleasant one it seems, with a water sign as well. Atop the five of fire, which again could be about some, you know, to the positive, taking some sort of action, divine masculine or king of fire style, um, or maybe about conflict for some of us. It is another strength card. So we have strength mirroring strength because there's one here for the feminine. Strength again represents the sign of Leo, the lion. True strength is displayed through kindness, forgiveness, and compassion. You have tremendous personal power and courage. So this is saying also. Um, for those of you who want to make up with a friend or who are wondering if you should make up with somebody who you previously had drama with, yeah, you can do that by extending each other forgiveness and kindness and compassion, which is also what um, the passage I read stated. And again, there may be a Leo involved. Atop the King of Fire, speaking of Leo. It is the 10 of summer. It's time to express your love and appreciation for family, be it relatives or chosen family of close friends. And this can be just one other person. Congratulations also may be in order on a happy and fulfilling marriage, as well as raising happy and balanced children. So the masculine thinking about taking the lead in a situation, maybe starting a family, maybe wanting to do that um, or to reunite with somebody who he previously had drama with or trouble with and difficulty of falling out. They haven't spoken. They haven't communicated. He wants to now. It's going to require some strength because again, they hadn't been speaking. Maybe he's going to have to muster up the courage to call him or her, um, or to take some sort of action toward making things better. Atop the nine of water, it is renewal. Maybe the, um, the feminine having prayed, wished, dreamed of, 
some sort of reunion with somebody. This is major arcana card judgment. That person may be a Scorpio, especially with the Prince of Cups mirroring uh, this. It's time to get clarity about your life purpose and to make changes so that you're on the path most divinely cited, suited rather for you. Forgive what has been done without judgment and fearlessly embrace what's to come. So whether you're walking away from something or walking towards something, you can do that. If you're quitting a job, for example, because I, I definitely see that for some, they're just moving on. Um, you know, maybe because there was some sort of drama, there was some sort of situation, it was toxic, you can't take it anymore. But you're going to leave in a way that doesn't burn your bridges, okay? Forgive without judgment. I forgive you, I'm still out of here, but, you know, we can shake hands like adults. Um, like the three of Earth, Major Arcana card judgment is about abundance that is earned as it relates to abundance. Um, finance, career, maybe even love, ascension, right? Promotion from the universe, elevation, being raised up as opposed to getting a raise down here in the 3D plane. It can absolutely be those things too. Um, all of which might be something that we prayed for, we hoped for, we wished for, it is now coming true. Atop this major arcana card strength, which mirrors another major arcana card strength, is the emperor, Major Arcana, the Emperor, which represents somebody, possibly a father or a father figure, an authority, somebody's boss, a Scorpio, right? The planet Mars, the Emperor represents the signs of Scorpio and Aries for me because it represents the planet Mars. Structure and organization are important right now. Don't be afraid to take on a leadership role as you have much wisdom to offer. So maybe you're being promoted with this sitting here under judgment and sitting next to the three of earth, both of which are about promotion and raise. Maybe you're being promoted to a leadership role or you have an opportunity to find, to go to a new job and be a leader somewhere else. Those things um, are things you're going to want to go after. This could be you also starting your own company, being your own boss, maybe signing some sort of contract with judgment, that could be a contract. Um, the emperor could also be coming into contact with some sort of officiant, some sort of authority. Um, but I don't feel anything negative about it, especially not sitting underneath the nine of cups. All right, so, yeah, I think the, all this, the only strength that's needed is to help you um, to be confident enough to accept the position or role, whatever it is. Um, all right. Atop the night of earth, <laughs> it's the night of earth. It's important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor. Once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action and get as much accomplished as possible. The Prince of Autumn, a night of earth is trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and funny. So this is, again, abundance that's on its way, and the feminine is working on manifesting it. It's very much on her mind, twice over, uh, to the second power here. And I think for a good bit, this is somehow like you're in control. If, if you're not the, if it's not your own company, you, you are some sort of authority or signing some sort of contract. Maybe it's like contract work. Crowning atop the two of swords, the six of spring, you may receive a promotion. <laughs> okay. I, you know, the, this is what the cards have been saying throughout the whole reading. And I think, um, this is what's happening for a good bit. It's a good week. You may receive a promotion or be chosen for a scholarship or find that you're singled out for some sort of recognition. You've done an amazing job and you deserve all the attention that you're getting. I also think that this is like victory as it relates to some of the drama. It's crossing the five of, of um, spring or wands um, here too. So I think it's connected to where this is related to drama, past or present. We're getting, we're getting past it. We're getting beyond it. 
in that same in that sense and being a victor over it. We're rising above it. That's elevation, being raised up, promoted, rising above the drama. Uh, atop the page of fire, the ace of autumn, you can expect a windfall of abundance, such as money, timely assistance, or a serendipitous meeting, maybe even rewarding advice. You may be asked for, or you may be offered a fa fabulous new job. Absolutely, I feel that for a good bit of you. Fabulous new job or a promotion or the prospect of a profitable business venture or investment, signing a contract. Wow, this is a nice week, at least in the financial you know, and, and career sector. Could be relationship too. Could be relationship too. Judgment as it relates to relationships, I don't remember if I went over it. Um, is about coming to a crossroad and deciding, like, where do we go from here, if anywhere? So, so some people are going to need walking shoes because they're out. Um, and, and some we can, we can resolve, and it's a good week to try to resolve something. The page of, both the page of fire and the ace of autumn can be about some sort of new beginning. The page of fire, pages bring news, all of them. This one brings news of a new opportunity. Um, and aces don't necessarily bring news, but they tell us... Um, you know, of a new start, like a divine new start, a blessing. So the two of them together, an opportunity to become abundant, a lucrative opportunity, whether that is related to finances, the material, um, or, you know, relationships, love and romance. It's a good situation. And at the heart of the matter, ooh, the five of winter sitting here atop this three of earth. I told you that this is something funky connected to, again, somebody else like coveting, wanting your abundance, um, trying to throw a monkey wrench in so you don't get it like a hater or something, or as it relates to a party of three, some sort of relationship between three people or involving three people, maybe even a love triangle, there's conflict, there's drama, and you want up and away from this bullshit like I was saying earlier, okay? Your current path isn't leading you to the happiest possible outcome, so why not change it? Always maintain integrity and compassion, but be alert of the hidden agendas of others. So some other people are foul, um, and you just need to rid yourself of them, of the situation, unless you're able to rectify it. You know, were you able to rectify it? Extending forgiveness, this is the, you know, the week of atonement and forgiveness, where, you, where that's able to come into play, you were able to extend that um, and continue with your relationship, then do. Otherwise, you extend that forgiveness to yourself and to them, and but you keep it moving, keep walking. Speaking of friendship, from the lesson cards this week, I'm beginning with friendship. I understand that a friend in my life is there for a reason, and right? And sometimes the season for that reason ends, and then that's the end of that friendship. Sometimes it goes on, you know, indefinitely, forever. We, you know, lifelong friends. Both are necessary. Both can be beautiful, even the endings. Opening to self-esteem. I possess gifts of the soul that benefit me and others. Friendship. And courage. This is more of this strength, strength. We have that to the second power too. Now the third. I find the inner strength to face fear with confidence. And discipline. I can accomplish what I set my mind to. I'm going to cut. Peace. That this is basically the big picture. Again, whether you are able to repair a relationship after the forgiveness or you're walking away from it, the point is to bring about peace, you know, and your peace of mind first and foremost, and then in general to the situation. I'm a being of love and I release all negative energy. So we want to get rid of this. We want to get up and away from this.
Overall energy is blame. I accept responsibility for my well-being. The masculine's lesson for the week. And the feminine's. Relationships, masculine. I'm attracted to those people who serve my higher good. Right, and we should be repelling those that don't this week. Feminine. Purpose. I know what I'm here to do. So you're not afraid to take on that next step that leads you to that higher purpose. Again, whether it's starting your own business or furthering your career in whatever it is you do already or learning something new. But I, I definitely feel more job than school. But, you know, sometimes they go hand in hand. You're learning a new vocation, as they say. That's a work. Um, whatever it is, it, it's focusing on you in that regard this week. Masculine for you, it is the nine of fire. Don't give up. Protect that which you've created. So we talked a lot about creating um, with the number three that's popped up many times today, this reading. So what you put your energy into, what you've tried to manifest, don't give up on it just because it hasn't completely formulated yet. Um, and for you, it could definitely be a relationship when you're with your crown by the Prince of Summer and then rooted in the Ten of Summer. This just need, I mean, even one other person um, around you can help you to feel this kind of love. Okay? So, um, go for it. Even if it's been a struggle in the past, there's been drama, if that's what your heart is telling you to do, <laughs> and especially if both your heart and mind are telling you to do that, that that's where you want to be. That's where you need to, to go, whatever that means. Don't give up on it. Protect that which you've created, even if it's a union, right? A relationship. Have courage. Have courage. And believe in yourself. And even your advice is relationships again. So definitely for a good bit of you, that's what the situation is. It's with regard to relationships, romantic ones at that. Feminine, major arcana card, justice. I was waiting for this to show up, to be honest. Um, this is Libra, okay, where Mercury is going to enter this week. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. Major Arcana card Justice represents the planet Venus, ruler of the sign of Libra. Again, important contracts coming into contact with some sort of authority, maybe because we're making a purchase or a sale or we're signing important papers. A legal situation, justice and judgment showing up over here and the emperor maybe something with our father or the father of our children could be divorce could be um child support or some kind of family court or a, a settlement that we're waiting for from our, maybe our father's estate or something like that could be too there's a judgment in our favor something our father left us some sort of inheritance and again, there could be a situation involving an earth sign, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, maybe earth and air. Um, we've also got fire here with the emperor representing Aries and it's sitting and well, as it relates to fire, Aries and Scorpio sitting here on top of strength, which is Leo. Then we got more Leo here and we got more Scorpio here with judgment. So a few possible characters. From the animal tarot to the masculine, it's another page of fire. Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, Scorpio. Creative opportunities that you feel passionate about are fluttering your way. Personal growth and broadened horizons will spark fresh and original ideas. The Princess of Spring is energetic, outgoing, optimistic, and creative. So again, this is related to what you have created, um, including families, babies, <laughs> unions, 
other situations for yourself, other types of relationships, friendships, different bonds, uh, and even something at work. And lastly, for the feminine, it's the eight of autumn. Speaking of work, it's the perfect time to learn all you can by returning to school, taking a seminar, conducting research, do your best work. And the law of attraction will bring you prosperity and career advancement. Boom. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this week's general reading. If you would like a personal reading from, from me surrounding work and finance or love or your past life or just about anything, really. Queen of Swords, the lightworker.com. There are also links on that website to my PayPal. There's a whole links tab and you can go in there and there's links to anything else that I'm involved with on that tab. Um, or people looking to make a purchase just outright or even to send a donation. Um, some of you are very kind in that way. I thank you. It is paypal.me slash queen of swords 99. And also on that website is my energy uh, healing. Offer. You can find um, the divine light cleanse and two of the other healings that I perform and get an idea of what I'm of what I'm capable and, you know, if you want to customize some sort of healing, I've done a number of different sorts of things with people and work with spirits and attachments and um, different things like that for many of you. So that's what's up. I'll be back with love and that I'll talk to you guys again soon. Namaste, angels. <laughs>